my name is Marcos Rocha and I'm a director of photography based out of the San Francisco Bay Area. In this video, I wanna show you all the gear I'm bringing for some travel shoots I'm doing. I'm traveling to different cities all over the country and uh, this consists mostly of interviews and B-roll. These are corporate videos and I'm working mostly, you know, it's just myself and the director, um, most, most of these shoots. Then there's one where I'm working with another buddy of mine. He's also bringing in his camera gear. So, you know, I have to prepare for both types of shoes where I'm, I might get a little help. And the other one where I'm working with the director, he might be busy talking to the client or the talent. And so that's where I have to be very fast, nimble, and, and be ready to set up all the gear myself, the lights, the, the audio, and the cameras by myself. So, you know, this, this will inform how I pack. So let's get started with explain everything. There'll be timestamps. So if you wanna skip ahead and know more about you know certain things, you can check those out. So for the cameras, I chose the Sony FX9 and the FX3 because of a couple things. First of all is the autofocus. I can move really fast when I have autofocus. And also because I have zoom lenses for these cameras, the 24 to 70, 7200, so I can get way more shots when I'm doing B-roll, different focal lengths, and rely on, again, on the autofocus, so it makes me very fast to work with these two lenses. I'm not working with primes, I've done that in the past, and it, it's painted me into a corner where I'm like, oh, I wish I had this other focal length to get this other shot, but I can't because the lenses are over there, I don't have, and it's just myself, so, if you're working with the first AC, then yeah, by all means, go with primes if you can do that. But when you're working by yourself, you have to be fast. So a zoom lens and autofocus is the way to go, for, in my opinion. Also, the codecs on these cameras are great. The Sony doesn't give you huge files. And at the end of the shoot, we need to quickly uh, transfer the footage to my client's hard drives. And so it'll be fast. Also, I may need to upload the footage to the cloud. So therefore the Sony is great because it doesn't give you these massive files. I'm planning to throw this camera on my, uh, here, let me, RS3 Pro. And so it's very fast for me to go from the interview and, and uh, throw it on RS3 Pro, RS3 Pro and it's already pre-balanced and I can quickly go on to get uh, walking shots or B-roll shots and reframe with the 24-70. The FX9 has internal NDs. Another great thing about it for you know quickly getting shots, running, gunning, it's great for that. I'm recording audio internally into the camera because it's great preamps. I don't have, when I have to worry about recording to an external recorder because that's one more thing I need to set up. I may not have the time for that. I can monitor the audio from the camera. I can monitor the eight, the you know the framing and the focus and all that from here and the audio as well. And I can listen in all from the camera. I prefer to, to do that as opposed to an external recorder where I have to make sure that, you know, that's another thing I need to look over. And so there's more chance of mistake. If I, I know I'm uh, the camera's recording, I'm also getting audio. So I'd rather do it that way, just feeding it straight into the camera. Now, so I can move fast. I love the Sackler Active 10. It's a one stage tripod, as you see here. I can, it's a latch and I can move up and down quickly. And this is often the case when you're setting up for interviews or B-roll, you, you know, where you wanna reposition the, the camera and you do it with the latches. And also you can level it from up here. You see that you can level it very fast, much faster than having to do the unscrewing from the bottom. So I really love the Active 10 for this. Again, this is why I'm bringing it. I'm working by myself, I gotta be fast. The second camera is just, this is just a simple tripod for holding the camera for the interview and that's it. That's all I'm using it for. I'm not really using this tripod for B-roll so I don't need anything fancy. This is the iFootage Gazelle TA6. And that's it for cameras. Let's move on to the table and I'll show you what I have here. First of all, the monitors, I'm using the small HD Indy 7 for my A cam, and I'm pairing it with the Secudo Magic Arm. You see it has this attachment, it's NATO, much easier. You see that it's ready to go. And on this side, I also have a NATO attached to the camera, so I can quickly grip it on to the camera and position it wherever I need to. I like having this uh, a magic arm because I can position the monitor down low, right? 
because often for interviews, you're, you're sitting down for like 30 minutes. And if your monitor is placed a little high above your eyes, you're like this, it can start hurt your, it starts hurting your neck. So a magic arm is a great way to bring down the monitor so you're not straining your neck. So I recommend that. For the FX3, I'm using the Ninja 5, you know, quick, just for the interviews, that's all I'm doing, uh, using the, the Ninja 5.4. Great little monitor, I power it with Sony MPF batteries. Uh, now let's go on to batteries, I guess, since we're here. Uh, I have these BPU 98 watt hour for the FX9. This goes internally into the camera. It has D-tap, two D-tap, so I can power the monitor as well. But sometimes I need to power the camera for long times and maybe I don't have a, there's no way to power it to the wall. So therefore I bring these 150 watt hour V-mount batteries uh, in case I'm, you know, dealing in a situation where it's just, I need to leave the camera on for long periods. And I have chargers for all of these. This is the FX9 wall outlet, so I can power it off of the wall. I often try to do that so I don't burn up my batteries. So you also wanna have that. Make sure you label everything. That way you know this is for the FX9. This is a cable for the FX9. Also because in my, in my case, I'm working with a buddy of mine and we might have a lot of the same gear and then it's hard to know, hey, is that yours or is mine? Or are these batteries yours or mine? Well, I labeled it already so i know these are mine so you know if you're working with other people that have your same type of gear try to label everything or also in case you lose it you know if you has your phone number on it it's if it's particularly expensive you want to have your phone number on it in case you misplace it you know so you want to have that uh cables two of everything two hdmis for the ninja 5 two sdi cables and two power cables for the indy 7 you don't want to rely on just having one. One can get broken or damaged. So I have two of everything. Uh, the FX3 back to batteries, I have here three of them. That should be a good enough for one day. And I also have different power cables uh, to charge up different stuff. Um, also, I have a cable to power the FX3 via V mount. And I even have this other bag with grip gear. I attach this to the tripod of the FX3. And then I slap on the V-mount, attach this to the tripod of the FX3, and use this cable to power up the, the FX3. And there, that way I don't have to worry about these batteries dying off on the FX3. So that's one way I've managed that or just plug it to the wall. I can also do that. Um, on this bag, I also have a little mini arm uh, attachment for the Ninja 5 so I can this is NATO rail, so I can attach it to the FX3. A multi two Allen keys are all in here. So it's good to have these bags. It came with the, the travel carry on bag I'm gonna show you later. So these are nice, uh, blow off dust, off lenses or sensor. Uh, I have gaffers tape, taping different stuff, paper tape and a Sharpie to label the media. Um, what else here? I have this RGB light, pocket light from Small Rig. I can throw this, it is magnetic. I can throw this on a lamp inside or just do a little pop of light somewhere where it's a little dark. Um, yeah, so there's different ways to use this. What else? Uh, this Vilium variable ND filters for the, 20, the FX3 because it, I don't have NDs built in. So these are great, it's magnetic very easy to set up. I really love using these and I have a video on it if you want to check it out. Uh, I always white balance both cameras for interviews because it makes it easier on the editor to match them up. Often uh, I've also seen where the A and B cam don't match up and that drives me crazy. So always white balance both cameras. Yeah, let me put this back. Okay, uh, I have media card readers for all the media, the cards are already in the cameras and they're formatted, they're ready to go. So when I pack them up and the settings are already, you know, dialed in, so I'm ready to go. I brought an extra one terabyte SSD in case I need to back up the footage and, and upload to the, to the cloud. I want to have a backup. My client will have their own SSD, but I want to have a second one in case I need to format the cards. Obviously I'm taking off the lenses when I pack them in. So I want to have the lens caps for and for the cameras and for the the lenses uh the Seconic C800 this this color spectrometer 
I like to use this so I can match up my key light, which is Aperture 300X. It's a bicolor to the ambience of the room. Often I'm getting, I'm walking into office buildings where they have these fluorescents or these, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, tungsten overhead lights, and I can't turn them off often. Or I'm getting, you know, some light from the windows and some from the overhead, and so I want to get an approximate ambience of the room. So I, this is where I use it. And I try to set my key light to match the ambience in the room. So this is great for that. Um, also because lights are not super accurate as opposed to the white balance. So even if you set the aperture 300 X to like, let's say 5,600 Kelvin or 4,800 Kelvin, you might be a little off. So it's, it's good to double check with your spectrometer. So, that's pretty much it for what's here. Oh, here's the, I have an extension cable, not a stinger, just in case I need to bring power to whatever the camera and also this, this power strip. Again, if I need to power multiple stuff. Moving on to audio, okay? So here I have the Sennheiser ABX. I really like the system because it doesn't have an antenna. I'm always fearing with my Sennheiser G4s that I'm gonna break that antenna. But this I can throw in my bag and it's not gonna damage anything. Also, this you attach it to the FX9 and nothing dangles. It's very easy to set up. It's all digital. You turn them on and they auto connect. Doesn't have a huge range, but again, we're doing interviews, so I don't need anything that has a huge range. So, uh, also get an extra battery for the AVX uh, because they die pretty quickly. It's all internal battery. Uh, two of everything, two headphones to monitor the audio. I have uh, the MKE-2 with this Bubble B Industries. This this hides the mic in collar shirts, which I'm often dealing with collar shirts. So it just slides into the collar shirt and it hides it away very fast as opposed to using Ursa tapes. I prefer to have this. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use this. This is my, uh, my little secret to hiding mics. I really like this. Uh, then I have a, a backup microphone, lab mic. That's pretty much it for what's here on the table. Let's move on to audio. This is the, I just bought this just for specifically for these jobs because I'm back, going back to back. This is a very compact travel size boom pole from Film Devices. See how small that is? And I have the Rode NTG3, I already have this, and a boom holder, compact. And you see, if you look here, this mini grip, grip arm that it comes with, and the Film Devices uh, mini boom holder. So it doesn't weigh much, but it's pretty strong. So I really like it. And two XLR cables in case one goes bad. You want to have two of everything, of course. One is 20 foot, one is 12 footer. Most of the time, you know, for these interviews, it's gonna, they're going to be a medium on the main camera and a, and a tight. So I'm probably not going to boom this too far. But if I do, I often hang a backpack on this light stand. These are travel light stands. Let's say these are from Matthews. They're metal. And, uh, but they're pretty robust. They're compact, but robust. So that's the audio going straight into the cameras. Now let's talk about lights. Again, the Aperture 300X. It's bicolor. I love that I can do that. And a 32 inch softbox. I'm not going bigger than 32 because I need it to fit into that bag over down there, the Tenba. So 32 inch is, is, is as big as I can do. If I had the 48 inch softbox, it's just too big. It won't fit. So. It's also faster to set up. Then the Aperture 60X, again, it's also bicolor. It has a spotlight and a flood mode. I can power it to the wall or I can power it with the V-mount as you see there. And it'll go for a long time. So if I don't have time, I'll just put a V-mount on it and power it like you see there and dial it in either for a hair light or add a splash of light into the room. So I can, it's versatile. I can use it in different ways. Now back here, you see this ultra bounce. This is a six by six ultra bounce. I don't actually use the ultra bounce. I use the other side of it, which is the black side. And I use it as negative fill for the interviews. Um, you see, I use the black side and I can also block a window very quickly with this. Again, it's on this Matthews um, light stand, a grip arm and a T-bone and that's it. And it's very fast for me to set this up. It doesn't take much time you know, to have it up and going. So I really like that. And it's probably the only thing I'm indulging in. I 
probably could do without it. We'll see if, if I'm like overweight, I might leave it behind, but I don't want to because I know I'll definitely use it if, if I have it with me. So, and it does a lot for interviews. So I definitely trying, trying to bring that with me. Uh, what else? Oh, I'm bringing my laptop charger for the laptop, mouse, a multi-port. Um, let's see. What else? Oh, there's these um, plastic table covers. I need to go to the dollar store or Smart and Final and get more of these because I use this to block out windows. Again, this is mostly for interviews to add shape to the room or to the interviewer. You don't want it just have a f flat interview. Pretty boring. So it's very easy. Grab some gaffer's tape, quickly tape it to the window, and now you're blocking out light. You're controlling the spill into the room. So plan to get more of these before I leave. Now I'll show you my bags. This is the main one. This is my carry-on where I put all my cameras. The FX9 will fit in here. The FX3 monitors, batteries. The batteries have to fit in here. Uh, mostly everything has, you know, the, the essentials have to fit here. And I'll, and, and I'll take this with me. It'll, it's a carry-on. It has wheels. It's a great ba little bag. It's from Low Pro. I've had for many years. I highly recommend it. It's, you know, it's amazing. It's been with me everywhere. Uh, the other one I have is this one from Tenba. It has, it's a rolling bag. I'm going to fit my tripods, light stands, and my Aperture 300X and the 60X in here. Everything goes in here. And I'm trying to stick to under 50 pounds because it's easier for me to go to the kiosk, pay for the luggage, and drop it off. I can go through security much faster as opposed to when you're trying to use your, your media pass. You could do that, but you know, you might have to get in line. That takes a, a, way longer. So for me, I'm trying to stick to a total of three bags. Two, are, are, I'm going to check in. They're going to go under the airplane. And that's the third bag here. This is where I'll put all my clothes. And whatever doesn't fit in these two, it'll go in here. I might actually get a bigger one if if it, you know, if I can't get everything in there, uh, I have a bigger one. But I'll try to stick to that because it makes it easier for me to move around the airport. I don't, again, it's all about being nimble, being fast, and not overwhelming yourself. So you want to bring just the essentials to do the job well. So that's it. You know, if you start checking in three bags, that's where the airlines get you. And they might charge you over 100 bucks for that third bag. So just for that one bag, like 150 sometimes. I think that's that's what they charge. So that's why I try to stick to only two. More manageable and less fees. So yeah. Lastly, uh, get a disposable water bottle. I bought this at the airport. It's metal, hard metal or aluminum. And I, I bring this with me. It's empty. I, after I get through the security checkpoint, then that's where I fill it up. Always have water with you. It's always a thing that I, I, I hate doing without. So make sure you bring that. It's very important. Um, that's pretty much it. The walkthrough of all the gear I'm bringing. If, if you have any questions about any of this stuff or my de decision-making process, please let me know. Again, this is taking me years to uh, perfect. And it I, obviously it changes depending on the type of job. For, but for these corporate shoots, this is what I'm bringing like most of the time. There'll be links in the description to everything I mentioned here. As always, I thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.